Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight, from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you Paul Lucas in A.B. Schifrin's I Like It Here on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark brings you Hollywood's greatest stars in outstanding stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is James Hilton. Tonight on our Hallmark Playhouse, we present our dramatization of a fine American comedy that first appeared on Broadway some seasons back. It is called I Like It Here, and was written by a talented playwright, A.B. Schifrin. I Like It Here is a story which, in its own light-hearted way, seeks to show what it can mean to be an American citizen. Its chief character, like a great many of us, or if not of us, then of our fathers and grandfathers, was not an American to begin with, but he had excellent reasons for becoming one, and having done so, I'm sure he was very happy about it. In other words, he liked us here. And we hope you'll like his story, especially as we have been lucky enough to secure for the starring role that fine actor, Paul Lucas. Now, Frank Goss, have you a word about Hallmark? Hallmark cards have a magic carpet quality about them. They take you visiting, however great the distance, to help celebrate a birthday, an anniversary, or just any day when you are thinking of someone. There is a quality about Hallmark cards that whispers good taste. And you'll send them with pride, for that identifying hallmark on the back adds meaning. It says you cared enough to send the very best. Now, Hallmark Playhouse, starring Paul Lucas in A.B. Schifrin's I Like It Here. Life for Professor Sebastian Merriweather and his wife Matilda was a succession of butlers. They were good butlers, as butlers go, and as butlers go, they went. And always for the same reason, they couldn't get along with the professor. And today was no different from any other day, except worse. Sebastian, are you sure you placed the ad in the paper for the new butler? To my sorrow, yes, Matilda. Oh, just how am I going to manage with the famous poet Vladimir Shabulnikov coming for the weekend? The weekend? Your last guest stayed three months. <gasps> I'm sure that's Vladimir. Answer the door. Well, uh, how do I greet him? I, I can't even pronounce his name. Open the door. Won't you come in, Mr. Uh, sir? Good afternoon. Where shall I put my bag? Uh, bags. You look as if you're set for at least a six-month stay. Oh, longer. Maybe a year, and who knows, maybe forever. Forever? Now, that's a long weekend. Oh, such a lovely house. So many beautiful things. Oh, yes, my wife is a collector. Antiques, paintings, weekend guests. Yeah, it happens, it happens. Have a cigar? Oh, thank you. Care for anything to drink? You're very kind. No, not at all. What would you like? There is a choice. Well, of course. Bourbon, scotch, sherry. A uh, glass of milk, please. Uh, milk? Well, of course. Uh, are you ill or something, sir? Oh, no, no. You see, for many years where I lived, there was no milk. And here in America, it is so plentiful. But I still cannot get used to this. So whenever I can, I drink of this wonderful liquid, which to me will always be the nectar of the gods. Ah, so you are a poet. And milk is for poets. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. You are a poet, too. I am not. Oh, you are mistaken. Every man is a poet. Some recite out loud and some inside themselves. Here is to the poets of the world. Uh, living or dead? Silent or eloquent? Uh, good. Very good. Tell me, sir, uh, what is your line? Yeah, my line? I mean, as you say... Oh, here, um... my life. Oh, yes. <laughs> and I'm a professor at the university. I teach American history. Oh, that I'm glad to hear. American history is my weakness. 
Tell me, sir, are you fond of music? I am indeed. Oh, I prefer American folk songs. Take, for example, my old Kentucky home. The sun shines bright in my old Kentucky home. Vladimir! Oh, Vladimir, darling! Who are you? Oh, I'm not Vladimir. That is for certainty. My name is Kringle, Willie Kringle. What are you doing here? I have been invited, so I'm here. Who invited you? Oh, uh, uh, here is my invitation. Mrs. Sebastian Merriweather, is that right? Is desirous of obtaining the services of a butler. Well, I'll be darned. You're looking for a job? Please, I already have found the job. I like it here. I will take it. You are familiar with my requirements? To perfection. Are you an American? Naturally, I'm an American. Naturally or naturalized? Naturally. I'm a naturalized American. <laughs> Where were you born, Mr. Kringle? Now, that is something I'm waiting for the peace conference to settle. <laughs> Mr. Kringle, do you smoke? Why not? I do not approve. Oh, but think what would happen if people stopped smoking. What would happen? Now, stop all smoking and you will ruin, one, the tobacco plantations, two, all the cigar stores, and three, some of the radio programs. Disaster. Oh, Mr. Kringle, you're a man after my own heart. You've just found yourself a job. Sebastian, come outside with me. I'd like a word with you. Now, why should two pe people go out when only one need go? I will go. No. Uh, yes. Definitely not. I don't like him. But what don't you like about him? You, darling, your pleased air. You seem to have encountered a kindred spirit. The two of you in the house, I shudder at what may happen. Besides, he smokes. Well, so do I. And he talks too much. But well, I... Uh, I don't think so. I, I rather liked what he said. There. He's already influenced oh, you. Oh, be generous, Matilda. He looks like a... Oh, a lost leprechaun. <laughs> oh, darling, I, I rarely ask a favor of you. Give the poor man a trial. Oh, very well. And only because I might need him to impress Vladimir Shabulnikov. But I've another question to ask Mr. Kringle before I hire him. Mr. Kringle? Mr. Kringle! Uh, yes, madam? Do you cook? Cook? Mrs. Merriweather, you have never heard of Willie Kringle's Massachusetts schnitzel? Madam, you have not lived. people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, establish justice. Ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare. And secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. Lovely. Thank you, Miss Laura. I'm going to know everything about America. Everything. My father says you're an apt student and a wonderful man. Are you happy here with us? Oh, it's been the most wonderful month of my life. Your father treats me like one of the family. I like that. And you, you are a dear friend, and I like that too. With your mother, Mrs. Merriweather, it must be astigmatism. We do not always see eye to eye. <laughs> <laughs> Willie. Yes? You've seen my fiancé, David Bello. How do you like him? Beautiful you are. Charming you are. Please, Willie. Now, please, what do you see in Mr. Bellow that I personally cannot see? Well, Mother says that someday he's going to be a great man. What is great? In my opinion, Mr. Bellow has something lacking. I think it's his heart. A human being without a heart. He's a machine. And when a woman marries a machine, what does she get? Little machines. <laughs> You're being very mean. Mother says David is going to be politically important. You know, he's running for office, and he's sure to be elected. Even before the people have voted? Well, Mother says he's very popular, and Mother... Mother says. That's all I hear around here. Mother says. Willie! Yes, Mother. Uh... <laughs> Mother? Willie, there's no reason for you to be sitting on my Chippendale chair. I'll never forgive you if you so much as scratch it. I shall treat it like my own child. Willie, your dinner last night was good. I meant to tell you, but you vanished. 
Oh, Professor Merriweather gave me a few hours off to go to a party. Oh, was it a nice party? Ah, yes, a wake in the home of Mrs. Maguire. One hundred people were there, and all Irish, if that is except me. Oh, you'd make a great politician, Willie. Where are you going tonight after dinner? Ah, tonight I'm attending a birthday party at the Olsons. The Olsons invited you? Everybody there will be Swedish except me. You see, Mrs. Olson heard me sing at the wedding of Mr. Zingarelli's daughter, and now she wants me to sing at her party. Oh, speaking of parties, there's just one little thing I must call to your attention, Willie. You must not engage my guests in conversation. You are so right. I cannot seem to mind my own business. Well, you'll get over it, I'm sure. Oh, I wish I could be so sure. I get over it for a while, yes, but it's like a haircut. Two weeks later, it's here again. (laughs) Just remember one thing, and maybe it will help you. Silence is golden. Once I lived in a country where I could not speak my mind for six years. Now, six years of golden silence leaves a lump in your chest. Now, here in America, the gold is coming out. But I will change it, I promise. Well, of course, Willie, I didn't mean to suppress free speech, but I do think that one must say the proper things at the proper time. Oh, we're having lunch on the terrace, Willie. David Bellow will be there. Remember your manners now. Yes, madam, I shall bite my tongue, if not if necessary. <laughs> Care for a drink, Mr. Bellow? Did you mix things, Willie? Oh, yes, sir. I don't think you like me. Did you put any poison in mine? Oh, no, but would you care for some, sir? That will be all, Willie. Yes, madam. Oh, Willie is becoming unbearable. In a pleasant sort of way, Matilda. (laughs) And I think... A curious chap. I've often meant to ask why you found him. Oh, he was one of Sebastian's discoveries. Foreigner, isn't he? He was born in the world. Oh, no offense, men. Let's forget about your butler, eh, Professor? You know, sir, I'd consider it a favor if you'd come to my political rally tomorrow. I'm to deliver a rather important address. Oh, about the new intercity parkway, isn't it, David, dear? Yes, I'm going to tell the people why this parkway should not be built. Why not? Uh, Precisely what do you mean by that remark? Well, it seems perfectly clear to me. (laughs) Willie ask you, why not? I think, Willie, you've overstepped your bounds. What right have you to question our civic affairs? Of course, sir, I'm an American citizen. Is that sufficient reason why I should have to explain my viewpoint to you? Well, sir, I only wanted to say that I... I don't care what you think. I'm not interested in your opinion. As a matter of fact, we don't want your kind here. Do we, David? Why don't you go back to wherever you came from, where you belong? I think you've said enough. Not quite all. Now, Willie, I want to tell you... if you'll pardon me, sir, I think I had better leave before I say what's on my mind. Willie, I warned you. You have your two weeks' notice. Two weeks' notice? Wonderful. Then I can speak what I feel. Mr. Bellow, you speak very loud, but that doesn't make what you say right. Any man who would resort to bigotry and who would treat another human being without respect, such a man is insensitive. Such a man hasn't got a good heart. And a man without a good heart doesn't belong in public office. Really? Well, I'm not interested in your vote, Willie. You or your kind. Do you understand? I understand you very clearly. Do you know the meaning of the word democracy, Mr. Bellow? I'm sure you don't. I learned it dreaming about America long before I landed here. Democracy is a blessing some Americans are laughing at, but the rest of the world is crying for. moment, James Hilton will return to present Act Two of I Like It Here, starring Paul Lucas. But first, why didn't someone think of that before? You know, I think that's what you're going to say when you see your first Hallmark bouquet, the most delightfully different greeting card you've ever seen. Each new Hallmark bouquet brings you a graceful cutout basket, overflowing with beautiful flowers, ruby red roses or alabaster gardenias or delicate sweet peas so vividly reproduced you can almost sense their fragrance. But unlike flowers that fade, a Hallmark bouquet keeps its beauty always. Yes, these new Hallmark bouquets are large and lovely and lasting. And they're topped off with a large bow of crisp taffeta ribbon that holds your greeting. And though they cost only 50 cents, each one embodies that unmistakable good taste that distinguishes every Hallmark card. 
There's a Hallmark bouquet for that very particular anniversary or birthday, for special get well cheer, or just for a friendly greeting, for every occasion that warrants extra thought and care. And you'll find these exclusive Hallmark bouquets at the Friendly Store where you buy your Hallmark cards. Here again is James Hilton in the second act of A.B. Schifrin's I Like It Here, starring Paul Lucas. Several weeks have passed since Matilda Merriweather fired Willie Kringle. And while Matilda, busy with her many activities, was content with this state of affairs, Professor Sebastian Merriweather was definitely not. I haven't had a decent meal since the day Willie left. Let's go, Laura. Sebastian, dear, you understand. I have to address the Women's League in behalf of David. You'll find fish in the Frigidaire. Oh, interesting. I'll be eating a cold fish and you'll be talking about one. <laughs> Goodbye. So long, Dad. Huh? Oh, Willie, Willie, Willie. Oh, where have you been all these weeks? I'm uh, busy making friends. I've met so many wonderful people. Oh, oh, oh. Cigar, Willie. Thank you. Would you care for something to drink? That is a choice. A glass of milk. Mm -hmm. Thank you. To the poets of the world. Ah, it's very good. Living or dead, silent or eloquent. You know, Willie... I feel as if we've lived this moment before. The good moments should always be repeated. Oh, Willie, it's so good to have you home again. Oh, but I'm not at home, sir. Soon, maybe, but not just yet. Professor, I have a surprise for you. Yes? Goulash a la Kringle. Oh, Willie, Willie, Willie. Oh, up until this moment, I thought the world was a sad place to live. Well, where else can one live? Oh, the moon, Neptune, Jupiter. Oh, but how do you know what you'll find there? You know what you've got here. You love America, don't you? As much as you do. Oh, ah, that's good. Oh, how is Laura? And Mrs. Merriweather? Willie, I've read thousands of books. I speak four languages. But when Matilda appears on the scene, I feel myself retreating like an army cut off from reinforcements. And why? You're a friend of mine. Why? <laughs> because you are in love with her. Oh, yes. But what can I do to bring her back to the way she used to be? Before she got interested in everything but me. Well, why don't you give her something to worry about? Why don't you make her cry? You mean pretend to, to fall in love with another uh, woman? Nah, that would only make her laugh. <laughs> you see, she loves you, but she keeps you in your place, like your furniture. Take this chair, for instance. Now, if it broke a leg, she would be heartbroken. She would cry bitter tears, wouldn't she? Oh, that's her favorite ship. And, oh, of course she'd cry. Well, when does she cry for you? Think what would happen if you broke your leg, your favorite leg. <laughs> Professor, please, break a leg. You, you mean now? In every man's life, a leg should be broken. <laughs> you see that beautiful Chippendale chair your wife loves so much? Uh, yes. Yeah. Hand me that chair, will you? <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Chippendale. Incidentally, it wasn't a real Chippendale anyway. Sebastian, what are you doing? Taking a chip from Chippendale. David! Yes, Mrs. Merriweather? David, help me. Sebastian's had a nervous breakdown. Well, if he has, it's due to the influence of this foreigner. I've heard about enough from you, you little stuffed shirt. Sebastian. Let him talk, Professor. America is so wonderful that they even permit men like Mr. Bellow the freedom of speech. But if it's a privilege, you should enjoy Mr. Bellow, not abuse. Now, look, you, I've had just about enough. When I'm elected, I'll say to it... I think maybe somebody ought to talk to the people about you. Tell them what you really are. Oh, I agree with you, Willie. I won't hold still for his kind of talk. We Maguires believe in fair play. Name-calling breeds hate. My family and my friends will never vote for David Bellow. <laughs> I was born here, Willie, of an immigrant father. I had the good fortune of becoming a lawyer. Laws are made to be respected, but uh, I don't know of any law ever written 
that said Willie Kringle or any other law-abiding citizen wasn't entitled to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. You're right, Willie. I couldn't possibly vote for David Benno. I've been running this bank for many years, and I believe as you do, Willie. A man should never be turned down because of his nationality. My ancestors were foreigners, too. They landed at Plymouth Rock. I shall withdraw my support of David Bellow. Willie, Willie, come in, Willie, come in. Good afternoon, sir. This time, Willie, I'm not going to let you go. You're going to work here again. Yes, but that is up to Mrs. Merriweather, is it not? Uh, well, I suppose so. You see? No, no, it's not. It's up to me. Since when? Since this very minute. I want you here, Willie, and I'm going to have you. I smell the smoke of civil war. This time I'm going to fight for you. Oh, I don't know why, but whenever people fight for me, I always get hurt. Then I'll, I'll get hurt with you. Willie, I haven't had a decent meal since you resigned. <laughs> I resigned? Well, let's not quibble. I'm famous. Willie, we're going to celebrate, you and I. Go into that kitchen and cook us one of your masterpieces. With pleasure. What should I make? Ah, uh, mulligatawny stew, a la crinkle. <laughs> Mrs. Merriweather, Laura's just got to do this for me. My, my, my entire political future hangs on it. And she keeps refusing. Laura, why are you refusing, David? I will not do it, and that's all. There, there, please, please, talk to her, Mrs. Merriweather. Yes, about what? Well, I've just been with Ralph Thomas, my campaign manager. He's discovered that the whole town is against me. <laughs> Three cheers for the town. Sebastian. Yeah, there's a, there's a whispering campaign going on against me, and Willie Kringle is responsible for it. Willie never whispers. It's got to stop immediately. Well, that shouldn't be difficult. I'll talk to Willie. Oh, no, oh, for heaven's sake, Mrs. Merriweather, don't. No, not you, you see. This, this has to be handled with the utmost diplomacy. Now, now, I know the professor won't talk to Willie for me, and the only other person Willie respects and will listen to is Laura. If you think I'm going to Willie after the way you've treated him... You see? You see, there seems to be a conspiracy in this family to ruin me. So, what's cooking? Willie! Willie Kringle, what are you doing in my kitchen? Cooking dinner. Sebastian, this is your doing. Willie... Are you mixed up in this election? Why not? I'm a good mixer. Laura. Laura, talk to him now. You must. No! Uh, the, Mr. Kringle. Mr. Mr. Kringle, I promise you that when I'm elected... Now come uh, the promises. But you will not be elected. Of course he'll be elected. Madam, the Willie Kringle poll says not. Now, now, look here, Kringle. I, I, I'd like to have a talk with you. My car is outside. What's wrong with here? Well, what I have to say is private. Well, uh, the peculiar thing about me, I like witnesses. Oh. Oh, well, uh, how, how would you like an excellent position on my staff when I'm elected, huh? I am not interested in that. Well, how much uh, money will it take for you to retract your statements about me and, 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 and go to the people and publicly tell them you made a mistake? People who build castles in the air should always carry a parachute. Good for you, Willie. Next telling him, Sebastian. You'd give anything to win this election, wouldn't you? You'd even give up Laura. Well, winning the election would be the start of my political future. And, and important to my social standing. You mean, David, you'd swap me for a bunch of votes? Huh? Goodbye, Mr. Bellow. Oh, it means everything to us, darling. you got to play ball. Looks like Mr. Bellow just lost a double header. <laughs> what he doesn't know is that another candidate has been drafted to replace him. Willie Kringle. I know, two weeks' notice. Just a minute, Willie. Uh, don't it just here, Sebastian. Stay where you are, Willie. He is not going. He most certainly is. Civil war has started. <clears throat> Sit down, Matilda. I want to... I see it. Sit down. That's better. From now on, you're going to attend to your duties as my wife. I demand your presence at dinner each and every night. And let Laura run her own life. Thank goodness Willie was ingenious enough to prevent her from marrying a man who would exchange her for a few votes. And should you deviate from your wishes, from my wishes? I'm speechless. That's good. That's the way I want it. <laughs> you know, Professor, you know the candidate who's been drafted to replace Mr. Bellow? Uh, who? You. Oh, oh, no. No, none of that now, Willie. Now, I wash my hands of politics. Now, do not wash the hands. Wash the politics. 
Professor, you know all about the great men who founded and made this country what it is today. You understand the heritage of America and you respect it and love it and will never hurt it. It is your duty as a good American to accept your obligation to her. You honor me, Willie, with your faith. And at the same time, you shame me. You've only been in this country for a few years, and yet you have to show me the way. Why? Well, maybe it's just that people don't think. And maybe they believe they don't have the time and somebody else will do the work. You know, a naturalized citizen has an advantage. A Native American, he has no choice. He's born here. He may not appreciate what a wonderful thing it is to be an American. Me, I had a choice, and I decided to be an American. And when I wake up every morning, I say a prayer and thank the Lord for giving me the privilege of being able to call America home. You see, Professor, I like it here. Yes, I like it here. James Hilton and Paul Lucas will return in a moment. Wouldn't it be wonderful if people could send their friends flowers that never fade? Well, that's just what you can do now with the new Hallmark Bouquets, the newest kind of greeting card. Each Hallmark Bouquet is a delicately cut-out basket that stands by itself nine inches high, overflowing with beautiful flowers that will never fade and topped with a large, crisp taffeta bow. And when you open the bouquet, there is your friendly message. Whatever the occasion, for graduations, for birthdays, for anniversaries, to cheer someone who is ill, or just to say hello, you'll find a Hallmark bouquet that will give lasting pleasure. They cost only 50 cents each, but they look so expensive. Discover this original and charming way to remember your friends. Stop in tomorrow at the Friendly Store, where you buy your Hallmark cards, and ask to see the new Hallmark bouquets. Here again is James Hilton. Thank you, Mr. Lucas, for a grand performance. And now, since this is our last show before the summer vacation, may I take this opportunity for a little personal thank you to all our listeners. I can't tell you how much the warmth you've shown us and the many letters you've written have been appreciated. And I can't help a little pride in having been associated with a program that has won such a, well, I must almost call it an affectionate response from so many of you. All of us on the Hallmark Playhouse have been happy about it. And perhaps that's one reason why we've been a happy team working together all these weeks. Indeed, we'd like to think we've built up something of a tradition, just as our Hallmark greeting cards are a truly American tradition of friendliness and goodwill. Yes, Mr. Hilton, and I can echo all that. In fact, if I might say so, the word Hallmark has become a true Hallmark of quality, and you, with your Hallmark Playhouse, have made its high standards your own. Well, thank you, Mr. Lucas, for a really delightful and eloquent compliment, and thanks also to Jack Rubin for tonight's excellent script. And now, on behalf of our director-producer, D. Engelbach, and our musical conductor, Lynn Murray, and all of our Hallmark family, I'd like to thank all the actors and actresses and writers who have contributed to our pleasure during the past year. And also our sound engineers, Harry Esman and Jean Twomley, our technical engineer, Mel No, our assistant director, Joe Alabo, and, of course, our genial announcer, Frank Goss. And may I also wish all of you as happy a summer vacation as I hope to have myself. I plan to do quite a bit of reading during mine, and I can promise many excellent stories when we return on September 8th. So, au revoir, and this is James Hilton saying good night. Look for Hallmark cards that are found only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember, Hallmark cards when you care enough to send the very best. This is Frank Goss asking you to join us next on September 8th. Now stay tuned for First Nighter, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. This is KMBC, Kansas City, Missouri.